produces only master who has lived his life like that. And so when he was ready to go to Himalayas, he has to pass the last check post. And there was a that was a security check. And there was a man named Khan Yushi. Khan Yushi is me. He was the master Khan Yushi. He was the in charge of the check post. When Lausi was passing, he said, you cannot pass. Lausi said, why? He said, you have to write something on top. And only when you can be allowed to go beyond this check post. Only then you will be allowed. So Lausi was literally in prison because he could not be allowed to go forward and could not be allowed to go back. So he sat down there. And he wrote Tao Te Ching, his secret, and he says that there nothing can be said about the Tao. Tao gives birth to thousands and one things, but it itself remains invisible. This is the nature of Tao, and this is the nature of meditation. It gives you many things. You attain many things through meditation. Life comes into right perspective and this and that, but it remains hidden. It does everything, but it is not, it never remains in the moment. It remains in the back. You are doing an uh, architectural design, you are writing a, writing a book. Meditation is at the background. The result that is there, which has nothing to do with meditation, all the books that has come out of Kaushalutta, meditation is at the back of each one of these. But one book comes out as wisdom from science of eternity, next comes out by another name. But nowhere it is there, meditation is there. Nowhere you see. The traces of, you can feel that there is a trace of something that this person has experienced, something as a result of this. Whatever he speaks, there is a different fragrance. But you do not categorize them, do not even decide that this is the outcome of the meditation. This is Tao. And Tao of meditation is a very important topic. So I decided that. This will be on the line Tao of Meditation. Then I thought that Buddha is a taste of your Buddha. When you come in the company of an enlightened one, you start feeling something within you, as if the petals of enlightenment begins to open, the tree begins to attain to a new dimension. And you begin to feel something pulsating within you. So life and Buddha becomes a taste of your own life, taste of your own intrinsic values, taste of your own inherent values of which you are oblivious up to now. And all of a sudden, it is completely something begins to happen in your being. A different pulse, a different heartbeat begins to happen. So then, this topic, Tao Shabuddha, the taste of your being, Tao Shabuddha, the taste of your being, and this book, a certain chapters will be written, and then it will be like the roots. So we take the title of each book and also a few excerpts, maybe a preface. A maybe a, a little enlarged preface to be given. This is more or less like an edited book. A little will be written, but it is more like a edited book. Of the title page, title cover, covers of each book, and also the extended preface will be given so that. For instance, 
wisdom from the science of eternity. How does this relate becomes a reflection of your life. Life mystical in science. How this reflects it reflects to your life. How it begins to unfold the mysteries of your life. This will be done in that. And maybe you edit that book. Let that book come out as your condition. I will do all the things, you can write whatever you can and I will do all the rest. We edit, we do the edited today, we hear it in the same way as the earlier one was done. We hear the edit, the pages of the books that we need to be put into it. And this will be a gift at the end. The lowest price so that it could be possible for people because Amazon will not, will not give it as a free distribution. So, this is how my business they manage these reasons and dimensions beyond is almost coming to an end. And I am still waiting from Adam, from Cayman for the book on book cover, then India, my love, I need my presence will begin probably next week. So that will be the taste of different phases of India, the spiritual horizon of India, different monsters, the Buddha era, the Krishna era, the Himal era, all this will be wherever there is a meditative part, wherever there is a part that can seek it to be either with them, that is the case I call the space of the people. It was to this realm, as that Amkar ki Razeela Taramu sent Baki Villa to India, he said, I am sending you to a land of Buddhas, which has been the university of meditation, not only now, but instead from times in India. The very soil is ready, the very air, the very fragrance is ready for the spiritual world. Master's person, Pythagoras came in search of the unknown, Jesus, Bojir, all these masters came in search of the unknown and unknown. They go in search of the miraculous ones. This is the India that I see. Not the India that was politically ruled by, dominated by many, that was divided and subdivided from time to time, that was invaded for various reasons for wealth, and that they could get only material wealth. And the entire the Vedic literature has been stolen and smuggled. And that has become the greatest library in Germany. I speak to you of that, which is the eternal quest of every seeker. It does not matter where you are, where you are born, where you have grown up, where you live, as long as your heart pulsates for the love, you belong to the land of land of beings, land of the masters, land of meditation. This will go on in that. This is in general about the end of the world. Then the music, the sound, the effects of the music of the human consciousness, this has been explored and became the part of the, the, the spiritual idea. All this will be included in that book. And in addition to that, it will be the fragments of the golden past, the flame of awareness, the songs in silence, the sutras in stone, a light thick in the dark night. These will be the part of the, the book, India, my love, my being, my presence. The Upanishad era, the Buddhist, the Upanishad era will be very important because these were the days 
the most glorious, the only search, the only seeking, the only longing, longing was to know oneself. No other ambition, rule, wealth, riches, success, power, everything was absolutely mundane. Those who were ambitious, those who were running after riches, those who wanted to be powerful, were considered to be psychologically in this life. And those who were really healthy psychologically, spiritually healthy, their only search was to know oneself and to be oneself and to declare the whole universe the even more secret. The secret is contained in the statement of the Mahasri. I am the ever expanding consciousness. The teachings of Upanishads, though they are much older than that of Buddha, but it still contains the same things. During the time of Upanishads, there was a boy named Shruti. He was sent by his father to the monastery of the Master's Guru, to a family of an enlightened master. To learn. He learned everything that could be learned. He memorized all the scriptures, the Vedas, all that is known, and all the signs available in those days. He became proficient in them. He became a great scholar. His fame started spreading all over the country. Then there was nothing else to be taught. So the Master said, You have known all that can be taught. You can go. Thinking that everything has happened and there is nothing else because whatsoever the Master knew, he also knew and Master has taught him everything. Shri Ketu went back home. Of course, the great pride and ego. He came back to his father. His father's name was Udala. When he was entering the village, his father, Udala, looked out of the window. As his son coming back from the university, he saw the way he was walking. Because the walk of Buddhas, their gesture is totally a different. They have been, the treasure, the infinite portion has been compressed, compact, compressed in with them. Yet still there is nothing. No arrow is that. He saw the way he was walking very proudly, the way he was holding his head in a very egoistic manner, the way he was looking around very self-conscious that he knew. His father became sad and depressed because this is not the way of one who really knows. This is not the way of one who has come to know the supreme knowledge, supreme awareness, the understanding. The son entered the house. He was thinking that the father would be happy. He had become one of the supermost scholars of the country. He was known everywhere, respected everywhere, but his friend. But he saw that the father was not happy. He asked, why are you sad? The father said, only one question I have to ask, have you learned that by me? Learning which there is no need to learn anymore. Have you learned that knowing which everything becomes known? Have you known that by knowing which all suffering ceases? Have you been taught that which cannot be taught? The boy became sad. He said, No. Whatsoever I know has been taught to me, and I can teach it to anybody who is ready to learn. Father said, then go back and ask the master that you are to be taught that which cannot be taught. You are to be taught knowing which everything becomes known. The boy said, but that is absurd. If it can, it cannot be taught, how can the master teach you? The father said, that is the eye of the master. He can teach you that which cannot be taught. You have to go back. He went back. Bowed down to his master's feet, he said, My father has sent me for an absolute absurdity. Now I do not know where I am and what am I, what I am asking you. My father has told me to come back and return only when I have learned that which cannot be learned. And what is 
decided to share that with them is obvious. His mind moves. There is no scripture that can teach you that how to be aware, how to be meditative, how to be mindful. My father had told me to come back and return only when I had learned that which cannot be learned. When I have been taught all that which cannot be taught, what is it? What is this? You never told me about this. So it came to ask the master. Master said, unless one inquires, it cannot be told. It is the most, even most secret. Unless one inquires, it cannot be told. You never inquire about it. People come to learn this, people come to know this, but they never come to learn that which cannot be learned. You never inquire about it, but now you are starting a totally different journey. And remember, it cannot be taught. This is what meditation is. Meditation cannot be taught. That it can be taught. If you are aware, attentive, and in the company of the light one, one who has attained to meditation, then suddenly, like flame jumps from a lip, can be to the unlit. Meditation jumps from the lit candle of the master to the unlit candle of the sun. And this is the way you learn that which cannot be learned. You are taught that which cannot be taught. And remember it cannot be taught. So it is very delicate. Only indirectly I will be able to tell you. This is what the master does. Many things that you are seeing, you are able to find yourself in your life, they were not taught directly. They were the outcome of the association, outcome of the company. And that is what is meant by that which cannot be done. Do one thing. Take all the animals of my Guru, my monastery. There were about 400 cows, bulls and other animals and go to the deepest forest possible where nobody ever comes or moves. Live with these animals in silence. Do not talk because these animals cannot understand any language. So remain silent and then just by reproduction these 400 animals have multiplied into a thousand that come back. Remember how much time they take. A 400 animals to multiply into a thousand. It was going to be a long time. Until 400 animals have become a thousand. And he was to go without saying anything, without arguing, without asking. What are you telling me to do? Where will it be? He was to just live with the animals and trees and rocks not talking and forgetting that human world completely because your mind is human. Your mind is human being. If you live with beings, the mind is continuously fed. They say something, you respond, mind goes on learning, it goes on revolving, it circles. So go. The master said, to the hills, to the fire, forest, be in the woods, live alone, do not talk. And there is no use in thinking, because these animals do not understand even your thinking. Drop all your scholarships here, drop your thinking, drop your thoughts, that you have told this, you can chant the mantras, you can do this, should it be follow. He went to the forest and lived with the animals for many, many years. In the beginning, he would sit down under the tree and give a discourse a talk on Upanishads, on Vedas, and all that is that scholarship that he has gained. A few days' thoughts remained there in the mind. The same thought repeating themselves again and again. Then it became boring. If new thoughts are not felt, if new thoughts are not felt, then you will become aware that the mind is just repetitive, just a mechanical repetition. It goes on in the run, and there is no way to get new knowledge. The 
new knowledge the mind is always happy because there is something again to try something again to work out the mechanism goes on moving but when there is nothing to think about there is no way there is no use of it what you can think in the company of the trees because there is no propagation of ego how would you feel because there is no one to appreciate what you are saying that you are a great scholar that you can chant all the mantras you have captured the knowledge that is contains all the scriptures the accounts were given in the city book nothing else maybe it is simply love of your folly of your ignorance that you are talking to us who don't understand Shweti became aware there were four hundred animals including birds and other wild animals trees, rocks, rivers and streams but no man and no possibility of any human communication there was no use in me in those things because these animals did not know the type of great scholar the Shweti who was they did not consider him at all They did not look at him with respect. So by and by he tried to disappear because of the sphincter. And it even looked foolish to walk in a prideful way with the animals as he did when he was returning from the master's university in his father's. He went short sure to start a feeling. If I remain egoistic, these animals will laugh. So what? So what am I doing? Sitting under the tree? Sleeping near the streams, by and by his mind became crystal clear, like the stream flowing down the moon. The story is beautiful. The years pass, and his mind became so silent and straight, he completely forgot that he had done. It became so silent that even this idea was not there in his mind that he was silent. The past dropped completely, and with the dropping of the past, the future drops automatically. Because future is nothing else but the past reborn. Because the future is nothing but the projection of the past. Just the past reaching in, into the future. So he forgot what the master has said. He forgot that he had to return. There was no, there was no when and where. He was just. Here and now, we live in the moment, just like the animals in the world. The story says that the animals became one thousand. They started feeling uncomfortable. They were waiting for Shweta to take them back to the ashram, back to the street monastery or the university of the monastery. But he has forgotten. So one day the cows decided to speak to Shweta. They said, "Now it is time to end up, and we remember that the master had said that we must come back when animals become one thousand, and you have completely forgotten this. Now is the time that we must go back. We have become one thousand. So Shweta to remember him, and he went back to the animals. The master looked from the door of his hut at Shweta to come in with one thousand." Animals, and he said to other disciples, "Look, one thousand and one animals are coming. Animals are simple of interest. This is why Sufis have used the word Suf comes from the outer skin of the animals. The innocence Sufis represent the innocence of animals, not the cunningness of people. It is a continuation of the." The university that the the India the inner space is inherent in the Sufi tradition. Shweta too became so silent, no ego, no self consciousness, just moving with the animals as one of them. The master came to receive. The master was dancing ecstatic. He embraced Shweta when he said, "Now there is nothing." To sit here, you have already. Why have you come? There is no need.
people pay masters, the songs of the teacher, they are all part in the Amanda Mighty Mighty Presence. Let us keep this session up to here until another unknown journey. Until another journey.